Hello, my name is Daniel Monson and I'm an associate professor at the Department of Electromagnetic Engineering here at KTH. I would like to welcome you to my docent presentation which I have titled Energy Storage for a Future Smart Grid. First, I'd like to mention and thank my two current PhD students who I'm very happy to work with. Together, we're doing research in energy storage systems and electromagnetic compatibility. For this presentation, I will focus on the energy storage research, which will contain two sections. First, we will introduce energy storage in the context of a power grid and the suitability of such for different situations. Then, we will look at a new and unusual energy storage system. One of the best methods to combat climate change is to improve the effectiveness of our use of energy. Herein, the concept of a smart grid is widely investigated and implemented around the world. In the smart grid concept, the power grid is made more intelligent using information technology to increase the flexibility, control and possibilities. Importantly, this power grid of the future contains geographically distributed sources of power generation. The hope is that the majority of these will produce power through the use of different renewable energy sources such as wind or solar. These are, however, by nature stochastic with time. That is to say, you can never exactly predict the amount of power you will produce at some point of time in the future. To some degree, this randomness can be circumvented by using detailed models, such as the maximum solar influx at a given point on the Earth at a particular day and time. Effects of the cloud coverage on this influx of light can be included and combined with the weather forecasts. But this will never give exact predictions and the finer details of the power produced at a point in the future is not available. In addition, the amount of power used by all the consumers is not a well-defined function, even though there exist well-working models and much experience with the grid operators that can predict this amount, it still involves a great deal of uncertainty. Thus, we can a bit roughly state that for a particular moment in the future, we don't exactly know what power we will have at our disposal and how much is actually needed. In addition, Due to the inherent nature results from being distributed and stochastic, these power sources cause problems for the rest of the power grid. For example, the amount and frequency of power produced from traditional power stations is controlled to not cause stability problems for the grid. However, for renewable sources, the situation is different. For example, when the wind is strong, a wind power plant needs to produce as much power as it can. Often, without regards of how this fits with the rest of the power grid. This causes stability problems. Thus, what is helpful for the environment can be detrimental for the power grid. This is one situation where energy storage systems can make an improvement. They can absorb or inject unwanted power to stabilize the power grid and balance for both sources and loads that behave in an undesirable way. Another example of use is energy time shifting. That is, when energy is produced or bought, when the, it is abundant and cheap and then stored. At a later time when there is a shortage of power and it is expensive, the energy stored is used or sold for financial gain. This is similar to the idea of shifting the power usage to a time when the demand in the grid is low. For example, using a washing machine at night, aiming for a low cost cycle when the power is cheap. Thus, energy storage system should be considered a vital part for the full implementation of the future smart grid. These two examples mentioned above, grid stability and energy time shifting, are only two of the uses of energy storage systems. The common concept is to shift some amount of unwanted energy existing in some form, often electricity, to an intermediate form and to store it until asked for. It is then transformed back into the original form and used. In this process, one can perhaps recognize a challenge. Can, we store, can the storage system always store whatever we try to feed it with? And will the storage system always be able to give the power we ask for when we ask for it? There are several key factors and requirements on the system, but mainly it comes down to capacity, 
response times, and efficiency. There are several forms of energy, mechanical, electrical, chemical, thermal, etc. They can be grouped into two main groups, kinetic energy and potential energy. Implementing these into working energy storage systems are done in different ways, but all lead to the system having different characteristics. Some systems will practically have a very large capacity, for example pumped hydro storage, where energy is stored in the potential of water elevated in large basins. This system has relatively slow response times. Some systems will be able to respond very fast, for example capacitors, that can both charge and discharge their energy in a short time period, but will have relatively small capacity. Depending on the situation, that is the time behavior of the power to be stored and the load to be supplied, different characteristics are required. We will now look at an example that highlights this. Here we see a fictional demand and supply situation. The power available from the supply, given in black, peaks at the middle of the time period. However, the demand of the load of the consumer, given in red, do not match this at all, as it peaks when the supply reaches its minimum. The blue line denotes the power that have to be either taken from the energy storage when there is a shortage of power for the load, or stored in the same when there is a surplus of power. Therefore, this shows the requirements of the storage system. The area of the yellow regions is the energy that has to be supplied by the storage to avoid the consumer experiencing a power shortage. Here, power flows from the storage system. The area of the green region is the energy that the storage system has to store to avoid a waste of the power given from the supply. Here, power flows into the storage system. In this case here, the storage system have to be able to deliver power sufficiently fast, giving it some criteria on the charge and discharge phases. Also, it has to be able to store all the required energy, giving it a maximum power capacity. Not, needed, all, not all storage systems will be able to meet these criteria, and thus, not all storage systems are suitable for all situations. This is an important conclusion as it means that energy storage systems cannot, without some thought behind it, be installed in a given place and be expected to work optimally. Of course, there are more points to be added to the analysis, such as seasonal variations, self-discharge loss of the stored energy, degradation of the storage system over time, etc., but this shows the point. For the sake of the analysis, the good thing is that energy is either kinetic or potential. Every energy story system can be modeled by using lump circuit components. For example, resistors will denote different losses. A capacitor will denote a potential energy storage, for example a battery, and an inductance will denote a kinetic energy storage, for example a flywheel. Different story system will be modeled differently. There are different physical processes in which energy is stored and lost are translated to electrical components. For example, let us look at a flywheel. The moment of inertia set by the shape and mass of the flywheel translates to an inductance. The rotational speed of the flywheel translates to the current flowing through this inductance. Different losses can here be included by using a resistance and a constant voltage source. In similar manner, we can model batteries, capacitors, pumped hydro storage, etc. Therefore, we can test the suitability of energy storage system for a given situation, or alternately, we can find the most suitable storage system for a given situation. This will allow us to use life cycle assessment to analysis them and analyze the environmental and economical impact of different types and the science of storage systems. For example, we can see if a specific battery or flywheel best suits a particular consumer using a wind power plant as source and if the overall conclusion still holds if we change the parameters of the storage system somewhat. Here is a situation based on a real load demand profile where the consumer is supplied via solar power. The reference in black gives the energy that is required to be handled by the storage 
to fulfill the demand of the situation. Three different systems are tested for suitability and as can be seen, not all of these can handle the situation. We will now move to the second part and look at an unusual and novel storage system that have interesting characteristics. We will describe what could be called a magnetic potential storage system. This uses strong permanent magnets in a particular magnetization scheme known as a Halbach array. This have the property of enhancing the magnetic field on one side and cancelling it on the other. The Halbach ray was first described as a continuous change in the magnetization direction. Later, the concept was expanded to include discretized arrays made by individual small magnets. By varying the width of the individual elements and the difference in magnetization between two consecutive elements, we can change the wavelength of the magnetization scheme. That is, we can change the distance between the poles formed. Here we see the magnetic field formed from a continuous array and that of a discretized one. Are, they are very similar. The difference becomes smaller as the discretization increases, that is with more and smaller individual magnets. In the case shown here, the magnetization wavelength in the material is half the width of the array. Notice the small amount of magnetic field above the array in each case. If two such arrays having opposing magnetization schemes are placed opposite each other, we have formed a highly nonlinear magnetic spring. When this is compressed, that is, the arrays are moved together, energy is stored in the magnetic field. Moving them together requires force, as we have to work against the magnetic field, and more or less, the amount of work exerted is the amount that is stored. This is similar to how potential energy is stored in a normal linear mechanical spring. Here we see a version of the story system where the wavelength is again half the width of the arrays, creating four poles per array. The arrow shows the direction of movement for the upper array to store and release energy. The big benefit of using Halbach arrays is that most of the magnetic field is, as can be seen, containing the gap between the arrays. If we had used normal magnets, much more of a magnetic field would exist outside the gap and above and below the configuration. The force needed to move them together would then have been much smaller and thus we could store significantly less energy. Some things have to be mentioned here. The individual magnets in an array experience forces that threaten to rip the array apart. However, these forces are not so large that modern adhesive can't hold the arrays together. Also, the force that each individual magnet feels decreases when the discretization increases. In addition, when the arrays are moved together, as can be seen here, the magnetic field also increases inside the individual magnets, creating a large dBdt during the movement. This, in turn, creates eddy currents, which lead to some of the energy being lost as heat in the material. The temperature increase is, however, not so large that the magnets are under risk of demagnetization. Here we see the force acting upon the array as a whole. <coughs> as we can see, the behavior of the spring is, in a non-linear way, highly dependent upon the dimensions and the wavelengths of the magnetization. Notice the much lower curve denoting the case where two normal magnets of equal size and magnitude have been used to construct the storage system. Here we show the energy density that is the energy per unit volume for the configuration. Again, we see that the storage system is very much dependent upon the dimensions and wavelengths. An optimal point can be seen for which the energy density reaches a maximum value of approximately 250 kilojoules per cubic meter. This is comparable to some other types of commercial storage systems. It is interesting to note that if we here increase the thickness of the arrays, we will move away from this optimal point. This means that it is better to use additional magnetic material to form new Halbach arrays than to increase the dimensions of the existing one. 
concluding it was seen that using permanent magnets to form magnetic springs via Halbach arrays, we can store energy. The benefits for such a system are mainly that there will be no measurable self-discharge loss. This as the magnets will not lose their magnetization under normal operating conditions. It was also seen that we can charge and discharge the system quite fast without introducing large losses due to inherent deficiencies. Finally, the energy density is comparable to some other types of existing commercial energy storage systems. The drawback is that the system will be expensive due to the high cost of the material consisting of rare earth metals. All in all, this leads to possible applications where energy has to be stored for a long time without degradation and then supplied quickly. <coughs> Here follows a short summary of my talk. For the full implementation of a future smart grid, we need energy storage systems. But different energy storage systems all have different characteristics which makes them suitable for different applications. Finally, it was seen that storing energy via permanent magnets in a Halbach array might be useful in some applications. Finally, I thank you for listening to me. This presentation with the notes can be found at the shown link. Also, here you can find all my publications, including those with the material shown here. Thank you.